Hi there, welcome to Apes Chapter 21 Lecture Video Part 3. This is, we're continuing on with our new renewable energy sources. We're going to talk about geothermal energy in this uh, lecture. So what is geothermal? Well, thermal is heat, geo is inside of the earth, inside of the rocks. So we have, inside of the earth, we have radioactive decay of elements taking place, and it's under high pressure, deep underground. So we have a hot, we have a heat source inside of the earth. And the whole goal is to take advantage of that heat source to boil water, turn it into steam, and then spin a turbine and generate electricity. So there, the problem with geothermal energy, there isn't a lot of places um, that have good sources of geothermal energy. There's a plant in Northern California um, called the Geysers that I believe it produces electricity for like over 700,000 homes in that area. So it's, it's, it's working. Um, Yellowstone National Park, people go there to see the geysers, and that's where you're going to see this kind of stuff. So you're going to see uh, geothermal energy wherever you have these geysers appearing. Um, what's happening? Well, I already said, radioactive decay of these elements just naturally creates heat underground. Then there's groundwater that can also that also gets heated, and then that groundwater can come up and then be used. So now you have heated groundwater. Um, so what does the heat do? It rises through, it can come up through magma, and it come up through cracks and fissures and rocks, all right? Um, what happens, uh, in case you forgot, this was back in previous hydrothermal vents in the bottom of the ocean. We have heat coming through those vents, and geysers, we have steam and hot water coming through those. About one-third globally of geothermal energy is used for production of energy. Most of it, two-thirds of it, is used actually for heating, like heating your home, for example. So what happens? Well, let's move my picture here. What happens? Well, you have a hot source. Look at this picture here. You have magma below ground, right? And that magma is heating up the water below ground. So the whole goal is to get this hot water up into a facility, all right? And it can also come up through geysers. Here's a geyser. You get that hot water come up into a facility, and it converts it to steam. So under uh, what they do is they, um, they decrease the pressure. And then, it, and then it turns into steam, okay? And when it turns into steam, it can now spin a turbine, which spins magnets around a, a copper wire and generating electricity. The water goes back down, gets heated up, comes back up. That's how this generally works. I believe this is in Iceland right here. This is one in Iceland that's showing you how it works. Iceland, they heat about 90% of their homes through direct heating with piped hot water. So they bring hot water up and they pump it through their homes. 90% of their homes are heated this way. It's pretty cool. That's a lot of renewable energy that they're using. Um, and Iceland is very well known for using um, renewable energy. It's not just geothermal. They have a lot of dams. There are a lot of hydropower there also. So the whole goal, like I mentioned, you get hot water to come up. The hot water can spin a turbine. That hot water can be piped into a home and used that way. That's basically the mechanism. You got to drill down pretty deep, hundreds or thousands of meters towards the heated groundwater. So let's explain this concept of ground source heat pumps. It's an interesting source. So what you do is what people don't ever really think about is that the soil at the surface is generally at the surface. The ground is the, the temperature of the air. But when you go down below the surface, and you don't need to go down very far, you go down below the surface, and you'll notice that um, the soil below is going to be cooler than the soil at the surface during the summer, and it's going to be warmer down there. The soil is going to be warmer during winter months. So when you soil absorbs only the heat more slowly than air. Okay, so air gets hot and cold very quickly. All right, if you're talking about thermal mass, air has poor thermal mass where soil, not as bad as air. So deep down underground, several just below the temperature, near, they're constant almost all year. So they don't get too cold. They don't get too hot when you go below the surface. So the whole idea of a ground source heat pump is to move water, pump water down below, have water down below in these pipes. And as water is down below in these pipes, in, in like for example, in the summertime, that ground is going to be cooler than the air. So that water down below will be kept cooler. In the winter, if you pump water down there, well, it's cold at the surface. Down in the ground, it's going to be a little warmer, so that water will be kept warmer down below. So the whole idea is to utilize the fact that the ground 
does not get as hot or as cold as the surface does. Therefore, you can keep water at a relatively milder temperature and then you can utilize it without having to heat it or cool it quite as much. All right, so the whole idea is to circulate the water. And what, what is antifreeze used for? Well, antifreeze prevents, um, in some cases, the water from freezing. So that's why antifreeze. That's why you have antifreeze in your car. So in the cold months, your car doesn't freeze over and crack the engine block. Antifreeze also prevents it from uh, boiling and turning into steam too quickly and losing it as steam. So it does both things. These are highly energy efficient. Because you're just moving heat from place to place, um, you're not actually producing or generating heat. So what are the benefits and limitations of geothermal power? Well, I'm going to first talk about the greatest limitation. The biggest limitation is that you don't have geothermal power everywhere. We have it in Northern California, the geysers. Um, you have it in Yellowstone Park. You have it in Iceland. You have it probably in Hawaii has it. But you have it in different places, but you don't have it everywhere. So it's not... Um, not everyone can use it. Geothermal heat pumps can be used just about anyway, though. All right. Um, geothermal water, well, when you bring up the water, sometimes they use the water and they don't put water back. That could be a problem. So um, if you use the water faster than water is being replenished in the ground, you could create issues. All right. Um, also, here's a big one. Let's think about this. It says, Geothermal heated water can release dissolved gases. Yeah, there's dissolved gases inside of this water. So as that water comes up and you and you release it to the surface, you can release some of those dissolved gases. It is much smaller amounts than you would get from burning fossil fuels. Sure, it'll release some of these chemicals that we don't necessarily want to be released, but they're releasing such small chemical uh, quantities, excuse me, compared to fossil fuel combustion. Here's showing you an example. Each megawatt of electricity production at a geothermal plant prevents the emission of 7 million kilograms of CO2 each year. So you're talking huge amounts of carbon dioxide are not being released as a result of geothermal power. It's renewable, um, but you, the, these plants can deplete the water. It's in renewable in theory also only because that, um, you know, areas that are warm underground may, there can be shifting of what's happening below ground. So they're not always going to stay that way. Um, some places, I believe, like in the geysers in California, that is the, the geothermal plant in Northern California by Napa Valley, um, I believe they are pumping more water uh, back into the ground um, as a result of that, which is also leading to some minor earthquakes. All right. It has geothermal systems. So what is this? Well, this is a, a plan they're saying, well, why don't we drill deep into rock? Okay and release pump water down into that rock. And then that water will get heated up and then we can excavate it in other wells from other areas. So pump it in one area, it gets heated and as it moves, as it, as it moves around and then boom, they, they pull it out in other areas. This is a, a means of trying to do, uh, doing something renewable. It is technically renewable. Um, it can be done repeated. This has been found to trigger earthquakes. Generally, you're pumping large masses of water into the ground. You're shifting rock structures, and earthquakes can happen that way. Stop there.